Hello, my name is Mark, and I'm going to talk about what human beings are capable of with perseverance. I do larger than life comedy videos, and they're really hard to pull off. The difference between me and a lot of people is when most people think about something, they wonder about something, I actually do it. I get obsessed. Can I pull it off? Can I really convince IKEA to allow me to live and sleep in one of their stores for a week? Can I really bring a goat into the Apple store in Manhattan? The answer to both is surprisingly yes. Doing these videos has led me to ask for more. I, I tell myself all the time, what can I pull off? I've learned that I hate the word realistic. I've learned to think big. I've learned to block out negative people from my life. I've learned that if you always make conservative safe choices, you will always get conservative safe results. And most importantly, I have learned the power of perseverance and that with perseverance, almost anything is possible. Here are 10 things I learned from doing my videos through perseverance. Number one, all Starbucks stores look the same. I know this because I went to a lot of them. For my video, 171 Starbucks, I wanted to see if it was possible to go to every single Starbucks store in Manhattan, all 171, in less than 24 hours, make a purchase, and consume something. To do this, I would have to go to a store every seven minutes for 23 hours straight, and there were people that said, Mark, this is impossible. You're, you're not gonna be able to do this. Perseverance, I got a bicycle at Kmart, scary New York City traffic. I, I drove around, I rode around for an entire month visiting every location, pl planning out my, my route. I was, it was like planning for a marathon, and I did it. I started at 5.30 a.m. at 181st and Broadway, and it, a little more than 23 hours later, I ended at 2.56 a.m., but there were many complications, uh, starting with the fact that I don't drink coffee. Hot July day, at the time I didn't, hot July day, sun, lots of coffee. After 12 hours, I couldn't walk in a straight line, let alone ride a bike anymore, uh, so I had to ditch my bicycle, and my friend Jill came in from Brooklyn uh, with a car, and they kind of threw me in the remaining locations. I was up for a total of 27 straight hours, and the next day, I was so out of it, I went through all the receipts. I did not have 171 receipts. I had 176 receipts. That's when I realized I was so out of it, I'd gone to the same store twice on five separate occasions. <laughs> Next lesson. Turbulence is like being in a boat in the ocean that's going over a wave. I know this because I lived and slept on an airplane, a commercial airplane, nonstop for a month to get over my fear of flying. Now, luckily, this is not where I slept during my month. I just, if you live on a plane for a month, commercial airplane, you find out things. I was happy I could contort myself there. Um, I had a genuine fear of flying. And the only way I, I really thought, Mark, this is how you're gonna get over your fear, is to force myself to fly over and over again, nonstop. So I get the idea that I'm gonna live on an airplane for a month, I write the treatment, and I, I think to myself, I'm gonna do this with Richard Branson and Virgin, they're innovative. I write the treatment, I put it away, and then a miracle. Two months later, another airline, AirTran, they approach me and they say, would you be interested living on our airplane for a month? I said, not only do I have the same idea, I have all the video premises ready, let's do this thing. They take me to Atlanta, this has never been done in aviation history, a dude living on a plane like this, FBI, background check, TSA is involved, and pretty soon, I'm living on an airplane, and I'm a bundle of nerves. Four to eight flights a day initially, customers get on and off, I stay there, but then another miracle. Every flight attendant, the pilots, they all wanna meet the guy living on the plane, and they talk me through my fear. Mark, all turbulence is is being in the ocean and going over a wave. It's driving over gravel. So, again, what happened from doing this, after a week and a half of this, the fear started to dissipate, and I actually got over my fear of flying. In one month, I flew 135 times, and I unknowingly set a Guinness World Record, and they put my face on an airplane. <laughs> but there were complications through this perseverance. It was psychologically the hardest thing I ever had to do. There were very hard things, starting with the fact that I couldn't shower for a month. I had to clean myself with baby wipes, and I had to go to the, the, the bathroom that you guys all use, the very small bathroom, and wash my hair every other day. Other complications were sleeping. 
I would sleep alone on the plane at night, and the cleaning crew would vacuum around me as I slept for my three hours. Blood clots. Everyone warned me. Blood clots, Mark. You have to be careful. Flying. So when people would get off the plane, I would jog up and down for exercise. And the entire month, I did not go into public once. I did not go into an airport one time. Complicating things even further, I am married. So my wife, Christine, had to fly with me on the weekends to see me. We actually had our anniversary dinner on the wing of a plane in Atlanta. Thankfully, the plane was not moving at the time. Next lesson, New Yorkers are nice. I wanted to disprove the myth that New Yorkers are rude. How do I do this? By having people carry me. I wanted to see how far north I could transport, my, transport myself only by having people carry me. In 19 hours, I was carried 9.4 miles by 155 people, and it was the coldest day of the year. Yes, my body was in pain. I was contorted every way you can imagine. Men were carrying me, women, old senior citizens, teenagers, musical theater students while singing Lady Gaga, and it ended up with me getting carried onto the set of Anderson Cooper Live. Next lesson, New York City buses are slow. I know this because I raced a New York City bus while riding a child's big wheel. Yes, it was big wheel versus bus. Who's gonna win, right? It was a one mile race on 42nd Street between 10th Avenue and Madison. And the bus actually had a 10% chance of beating me. I did the research. And I don't know if you can tell, but the pedals, my legs were in massive, massive pain. I had adrenaline because of the bus, uh, because I didn't want the bus to beat me, and I ended up winning by one minute. Take that, MTA. Next lesson, the lights in Ikea go on at 5 a.m. every morning. I know this because I lived and slept in Ikea for an entire week. How does one get to live in Ikea? The answer is ask, ask again, perseverance, persistence, polite persistence. Two months after this, they said, okay, okay, we'll, we'll meet with you. And after the meeting, during the meeting, actually, they said, Mark, there's something about you. We trust you. I was so excited for the video content, but it was crazy because after two days, it was national news, three days, international news. People are driving hours to meet the guy who's living in a store. I'd wake up from a nap, and three people would be staring at me like I was an animal in a zoo. Rollerblading with security guards at three in the morning, and yes, after a week, I still cannot assemble IKEA furniture. Next lesson, crumbs, cupcakes, kill six-pack abs in five days. I know this because I got a six-pack in 28 days and killed it in five days. I wanted to see what somebody would have to do to persevere enough to get six-pack abs in 30 days because all those men's magazines say get six-pack abs in 30 days. What would the price be? So I got a personal trainer, Robert Brace. And he said, Mark, I can get you six pack abs, but at a price. The first thing is, you're gonna have to work out with me every day. I said, that's easy, done. Mark, the second thing you're not gonna like, you're gonna have to eat 330 hard boiled egg whites in a month, 11 a day. That was not fun, but I did it, and I was so disciplined, I did it in 28 days. I guarantee you I do not look like that anymore. Uh, but I was so disciplined, at night I would dream about food, I would fantasize about food. One night I was dreaming about cookies and I was so disciplined, even in my dream, I spit the cookie out. <laughs> Next lesson, the Apple Store will let their customers do practically anything. I know that because I successfully brought a goat into the Apple Store. This is Nala the goat, isn't Nala adorable? Nala is great. This was the Upper West Side of Manhattan Store. Um, I had heard that people had done crazy things in Apple stores. It had never been documented on video, and I wanted to set out and see how far I could go. This is me ordering a pizza to the second floor of the Soho Apple store. The Apple store employees were totally cool with that. This is me having a date with my lovely wife, Christine, at the Fifth Avenue store with music, with a disco ball. We had uh, food served to us. I asked them if they could turn the lights down. That was the only thing they said no to, but we had our date. And this is me getting my iPhone repaired while dressed as Darth Vader. Uh, all of the employees flocked to me and I thought I was going to be in trouble, but no, they all wanted a photo with Darth Vader. Next lesson, you do not have to do anything noteworthy or heroic for U.S. mayors to present you the key to the city. I know this because in one month of traveling the country, I was presented 95 keys by U.S. mayors. I'm talking big places. I got the Tampa, Florida key to the city, Milwaukee, Tom Barrett, 
Uh, I got the key to the city of Baltimore. Big places, little places, and Hampton, Virginia. This was the first time they ever gave the key to the city. Ask, 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 persevere. And some mornings, I would wake up, and I would have absolutely no keys lined up, so I'd cold call city halls. And uh, this is 1030 at night in his home because the city hall was closed. This is Mayor Ron, Ron Sandak. Next lesson, it's possible to watch a movie for 3.2 cents. I know that because I took advantage of my Netflix subscription more than anybody in history for streaming. In one month, I watched 252 films, which worked out to 404.25 hours, which is 3.2 cents. You'd think that this would be fun initially, and it was for a day or two, and then it became very, very hard for me to keep going. But then uh, Andrew McCarthy did commentary on St. Elmo's Fire for me, which was good one time. And Netflix found out about it. They started tweeting me, and they flew me out to Los Gatos, where their headquarters. I got to meet Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix. And they made it Mark Malkoff Day at Netflix. <laughs> Next lesson, you do not need a place to stay in LA. It is not necessary to spend thousands of dollars on hotels. I know this because when I went to LA instead of hotels, I asked famous people, can I sleep over at your home? This is Dave Coulier from Full House and Fuller House, Uncle Joey. I did not know him. This is the first time I'd ever met him. I used Facebook, I used Twitter, I wrote letters, I'd email if I could, and I said, can I sleep over at your home? Celebrities are used to asking, you know, can I have a selfie with you, an autograph, I said, can I sleep over? So this is, I slept in Dave Coulier's SUV, I thought that would be fun, but I did actually get to have breakfast with him and I got to hang out with you. Kate Walsh and I had a, a celebrity nap. I would take naps with celebrities during the day as well. Uh, Paul Feig from Bridesmaids, um, who did the Melissa McCarthy movies, a lot of them. And you just never know what people, that's Cameron Mannheim's Emmy. So the power of asking is an incredible thing. And I will just end by saying, with perseverance and asking for ridiculous things, amazing, miraculous things can happen. Thank you so much.